Hi, my name's Richard Hamm, and I've noticed a few people on Board Game Geek lately have been asking for um, some kind of video review or you know tutorial or intro to Helvetia or um, uh, Helvetia. I have no idea how to pronounce it. I do not speak Swiss. But anyway, I've always wanted to make one of these videos, and I had the afternoon free, so I grabbed my wife's iPhone, and I figured, what the heck, I'll give it a try. I apologize in advance for the shaky cam. I don't have fancy tripods or any of that stuff. But I figured, what the heck, let's give it a go, see how it looks, and... Um, if you guys like it, let me know. Okay, here we go. Turning the camera around in three, two, one. Ta-da! Okay, so Helvetia is a uh, very cool game with a lot of really unique um, gameplay mechanics in, in a sort of a worker placement, uh, goods generation t style game with... Uh, Ah, oh, the hell with all that. Let's just start talking about the game itself. This is the main player board, um, where you actually see several core elements of the game. This area up here kind of represents some big city in Switzerland, where our little villages want to send off goods, and that's the main way you score points in this game. So, in my village, if at some point I ever generate goats, goats. Um, that means I take this, which is worth a point. As you can see, there's a little one on it. So I take this, and that's a point I've gotten, and I put one of my little markers here to indicate that I have built goats. I can, I can or not built goats, uh, but have actually generated goats and shipped them off um, to the big city to um, get points. Now other players, they can um, do a goat and put a marker as well. I can never do a second one, but I, my having done it doesn't stop anybody else. However, I, that was the first one, and the guy who got uh, the bonus point for, um, you know, the, for doing the goat. Each one of these is worth a point. So right now, if this were the set state of the game, I would have one, bink, for having built this first, and I'd have one for having put my little cube out. So I'd be at two, and the blue player would be at one. And I'm well on my way. The game is won as soon as somebody makes 20 points. It goes a little bit farther because you can actually in one turn go well over 20 points. Um, but anyway, so that's just kind of a little intro of, of the core mechanics of the scoring is generating goods put these away, to, uh, to score victory points, which everybody loves. Um, and well, enough about the main board. Uh, you know, this is where you actually do your workers. Uh, it's where you keep track. But actually, let's talk a little bit about your board. This is my little village. This is the village center. Everybody gets one. And as part of setup, one of the uh, interesting things is uh, you can in the game um, do this sort of starting draft mechanic or uh, system where players are taking turns and trying to grab their starting buildings. And uh, you know, so there's a, that, that can create a lot of depth right, right at the beginning of the game. But uh, my wife and I playing it two-player, we just like to get up and go. So you'll notice on the back of these, I happen to randomly get letter A, which means I get all the A buildings, you know, um, which is a place to make bricks, a place to make lumber, and a place to make straw. Um, whereas uh, you know, my wife's uh, play area over here with the blue. She had a B, which means she started out with bricks, stone, and water. And the third player, because if you're playing the game two-player, you have a dummy neutral village that kind of represents a three-player game. Um, he started out with the extra leftover tile, so he has straw, stone, lumber, and water as well. Um, so, like I said, you can draft to try and get like the perfect combination of starting materials and you know pay attention to what everybody else is getting, or you can just say, screw it, let's just go with what um, the game gave us. And that's what we've done here. After you've, um, and so we've got this village center and we've got these three tiles. So the next choice you're gonna make is how you actually set up your town. And the main rule is these tiles always have to go orthogonally, um, you know, or they basically they can't go in the middle or they can't do things like this. They have to line up with this village center in the obvious way. And, um, you know, so there's lots of different ways you could go, uh, but generally um, at the beginning of the game, for reasons I'll explain later, you want to build on a corner like this. Um, you know, so like that would be legal or that would be, in fact, heck, I'm just gonna go with this. Say this is my starting position of my buildings and that's my wife's starting position. Um, now, the next step, and this is a very important step where everybody takes turns, because a lot of strategy comes out. We have um, start with three pairs of a man and a woman. Actually, that's interesting to talk about too. A lot of people complain about the man and the woman, um, how it's kind of hard to tell them apart. You can see the guy has a cute little bowler hat and the lady has, um, I don't know, a bun hairdo or something like that. And so, you know, at a glance, it's kind of hard to tell them apart, unfortunately. Some stickers or something would have been nice. But the reality is, um, it's not too terribly hard here, live, in person, um, as long as you have them above each other. Because you can see the guy is a little bit taller. And so, 
it's it's something you get used to, but it would be nice. But anyway, um, I'm knitting picks, so let's just move on. So um, I've got these uh, three groups, and so I'm going to take the first one because uh, I'm the star player. I've got the star player marker, and I'm going to put one of them, uh, two of them, on one of my starting buildings. So I'm going to put this guy on my brick, and this lady on my wood, and then uh, the next player. Uh, let's see. So my wife, she's going to put a guy on uh, the the water and a lady on the um, brick. And um, if, if we were playing a three-player game or four-player game, the next player would. Um, in this case, the for the neutral village, it's kind of interesting. Um, we Each player takes turn picking a building and picking a starting person for that. But I've already done that ahead of time. Um, you know, and you know, that's the end result. Uh, but anyway, so... The next, so so we do this round robin. The next set, I've got this next set. Um, the other one is going to go on. Let's see, what is it? I always forget this. Sorry, let me look at my little printout because um, unfortunately there are no English rules yet. But the printout is pretty good. Uh, so this, let's see, first pair is on two buildings. The second pair is um, village on the remaining building. And yeah, let's go. right. So this next pair, I'm going to take this guy, uh, my other guy, and this is this is starting to get into important choice time here. Um, I'm going to put a guy on a so on the straw house, and I'm going to send this other girl off to school. Now she's in school. That effectively means um, you know these are full grown adult workers um, who are ready to generate straw and other resources for me. This is a teenager. And I guess this is kind of a provincial time because the teenagers can get married. Um, they can actually, uh, you know, get married in somebody else's house and, and start working. But they can't actually start working in their own house yet until they're a full-on adult. But they can get married into another um, a, a house that already has an adult in it. So, I don't know, I guess there's some thematic interest there. Uh, you know, things are different back then. And I, well, I assume things are like that still today. But... Enough, this is not a uh, socio-political uh, commentary video. This is talking about how video. So, um, that was my second group. And uh, my wife did, uh, she put a guy there. And Okay, so there's two lovely uh, teenage girls off there in school learning their, their numbers. So my last group now, and then, you know, the third player would, but that's the dummy player. Uh, my last group, i got to calm this down. I'm getting all shaky cam. I apologize. So my last group. Um, one of them is going to go into the village center, um, who's just kind of the layabout of town waiting to work, but there's no house for him to live in that he could work, so he's just waiting for a chance. And the other one, and, and this is all just very random, I just kind of arbitrarily, uh, my last one is another lady. And this lady is going to marry into my neighbor's village. And so I look over my neighbor's village, and my, this lady cannot marry the neighbor lady, uh, because unfortunately uh, there is no same-sex marriage in Switzerland in, I don't know when this is, the 1800s. That's a shame, perhaps an expansion will fix that, but for now, sorry, um, the sanctity of marriage must be ad held, uh, upheld. So, I can marry um, this guy or this guy, and if I look at him, it's an interesting choice, because if I marry this guy, um, my village, again, I have bricks, lumber, and straw. If I marry this guy, I also indirectly have access to water. Or I can marry this guy and have access to stone. And so that's why I was saying um, early on, there's a lot of important choices. Watch what your neighbors are doing because if you want to get their water, um, make sure you've uh, you know got the uh, the sex set aside to be able to do it. So I, I did that, and um, you know and my other person just went to um, lay around, and my wife, her final one, she'll put a lady waiting to get to work, and she, her last dude will marry my wood um, guy, which makes sense because she can't generate wood on her own, so she's married into my village to generate wood. So that's set up, and now we move on to the main game. And, uh, the, oh, wait, there's one more thing about setup. Dowries. These discs, and you'll start with four, represent the number of actions you can do every turn. You can do up to four actions um, every go-around. But you'll notice we have two additional ones. These ones you don't have at the beginning of the game. You have to, they are dowries you can earn um, for marrying well. So one of them goes into each of my neighbor's villages, and one of Jen's goes into my village and the neighbor's village. And so now what will happen is, later in the game, if Jen ever marries a number one, uh, another one of my villager, villagers, she will get this as a dowry, 
and she'll have five actions. And same for me. If I marry into hers, I will get this. And if either of us marry into the neutral, um, they're both waiting. Now, in a multiplayer game, it gets a little bit more interesting because everybody's got a couple uh, different uh, dowries in, spread around in all the different villages. And so you want to marry into a village to get your dowry so you can get an extra action. But um, you might want to marry into another village to get the um, dowry for somebody else. Because, um, you know, uh, if, if for whatever reason, I married into this village early on. And, of course, the first thing I'm going to do is grab my dowry. So I've got five actions. woo uh, But then later on, Jen has not married into this village yet. And she's giving me a chance. If I marry another person in this village, I get this dowry. Her extra worker. And now it comes over here. So now she's got to marry into my village twice to get her two additional actions. And that's important because without marriage, there can't be babies. And without babies, there can't be extra workers. But that's jumping a uh, gun a little bit. Let's go ahead and put these back. But that's the basics of dowries. Now, everything is set up. And uh, we'll talk about the game and how you play. So as I said, um, I'm the first player. Which, by the way, this first player means I have implicitly one point. This is worth one point. So actually, um, on the score track... I'm at one, and uh, my wife is at zero, and everybody else would be at zero points right now. So I've got these four actions, and I can spend them on any of these four, five activities. Um, and those activities are the builder, which lets you build new buildings, um, the uh, merchant trade guy, um, and it's through him that I can actually take my goats and my cheese and my straw and sell it to the big city and earn points. If I do actions here, I get to sell stuff up there. Uh, next up is the Night Watchman. As your workers are um, generating goods, like uh, say, at some point I want some brick, um, which, I, which I can do. Um, the way I generate that brick, the way I symbolize it is by, um, oh look, he fell down, he's very sleepy, he's very tired, because it, it you know, took it out of him to build that brick. And so he's going to take a break for a while. He's going to stay like that for the rest of the game, unless the Night Watchman comes and wakes him up. So there might be a situation in the game where you have early on, I've made some brick, and now he's useless to me. And then later on, I make some straw, and, you know, and I use my um, my married guy lady over here, and I make some wood. Um, you know, so she's asleep too. And now, um, if I want to generate more goods, everyone's asleep and I can't do it. The only I can still generate this wood here, but I might need wood in combination with something else. And so that's where the Night Watchman comes in. If I do this action, I can choose any quadrant of um, my city or my village or somebody else's village, any village. I can choose a quadrant and, sh and wake everybody up in that quadrant. And what I mean by quadrant is, in this case, I could say I choose this and everyone woke up. If my wife had previously put this person to sleep, um, me doing this would have woken him up as well. So I end up helping her out also. And the quadrant thing, um, just as an example, you know, if later on I build a couple more buildings like this, this is a quadrant. So if I had workers over here who were asleep and I had these workers and I, and I take the night watchman action, I have to choose. Am I going to wake up these ones for the buildings that are here? the buildings that are here, or later on, the buildings that are here or here. These buildings are unique um, because um, it's in both quadrants. So if somebody's asleep here, you can... Actually, this would have been a more interesting example. Um, if if uh, I've got a, if I'm going to wake somebody up, I've got a decision to make. Do I wake up because I care about... I need that straw, so I'm going to wake somebody up. Um, and inadvertently, I'll wake up other people too. So if you had a situation where I want that straw, so I'm going to do the action for the Night Watchman, wake him up, I have to choose. Am I going to wake up this quadrant or this quadrant? Now, maybe I don't care about um, you know, getting this uh, goods transfer guy, and it'd be nice to upgrade my brick, but in doing that, or uh, you know, wake up my brick, I would also wake up my opponent's worker as well and give her more actions. So that's a, like one of the examples of the interesting um, you know, um, synergy between the different players, which is what really, I think, makes this an interesting game. But enough about all that. Let's just go ahead and... Uh, I'm jumping ahead of myself and setting up stuff that isn't there yet. Let's see. So that's all legal, right? Yeah, one, two, three, four. Yeah, yep, yep. Okay. And she's back away. So anyway, back to the actions. Very much apologize for the shaky cam, by the way, but you get what you pay for. Um, so that was the Night Watchman. That's what he does. The um, Priest which is, as you can tell from this icon, uh, man and woman, is all about marriage. You do an action there, and that lets you take a worker you have who's currently idle, um, i.e., somebody who's sitting, um, just you know, doing nothing in the village, or somebody who's off at school, one of these teenage boys or girls. You take them, and you can marry them into somebody else's uh, village. That's the important thing. Your 
um, the uh, workers you make can never marry into your own village. You always have to marry into somebody else's village. So you always have to be aware of of you know what houses they've got and what the sex is of the person who's in that house. Because if I if I get her and I want to marry her, um, you know I'm limited to getting this water guy or over here. Um, a wood guy and a straw guy. And I already have wood and straw. So that's another big element to pay attention to over the course of the game. But anyway, that's a bit about marriage. And then finally, there's the midwife, which is all about uh, having babies. And to do that action, um, that means you come back, if I do the midwife action, I mean, kind of come back over to my village and what do you know? There happens to be a lovely married couple here. Um, I do the midwife action, that means I take a, I get to choose a little baby boy or a little baby girl. It's uh, some future tech they had back uh, in ancient Switzerland uh, where they could uh, pre-assign the sex. So let's say I choose a little boy and I take, so this is a, you know, male, oh, there we go, a male marker. I put it on side like this to indicate, oh, the little baby. So I've just had a kid. At the end of the turn, this baby is going to grow up and go off to school. Which means for the next turn, uh, that teenager will be available to marry or come back to my village. And then the following turn, they'll be available to um, join the workforce. So anyway, that's um, having babies. So those are the five actions. And so let's just, let's just go through a sample uh, turn. So let's say I start out and um, I want to uh, build. Yeah, let's say I build. So I've got these four discs. I'm going to put one down on the builder. I have just put that down on the builder. A couple things happen. First of all, I was the, um, oh yeah, uh, so I'm going to be able to build one of these buildings that are out. And right now, at the beginning of the game, there's four types. There's um, a cow farm, a goat farm, a um, ore uh, generating facility, and this um, thing that lets you convert um, any of the basic goods into the other. So I could convert this brick into bricks, water, lumber, um, ore, ore straw. So I could build any one of those and see. So I, I've, I've chosen the build action. So now I look around, what do I have? What access, what goods do I have access to that I could use to build one of these buildings? And if I look, I've got bricks, wood, straw, and stone. If I look over here, what can I build? Uh, for instance, um, this goat farm requires lumber, um, bricks, and stone. So I'm going to build that. I'm going to go into the goat farming business. Uh, so we take this, I put it anywhere, you know, um, legal or I want. At this point, I'm going to put it here so that I can benefit from the, um, you know, the multiple waking up. But that does become part of a long-term strategy. How do you actually build this village? Because you, I mean, you, know, you notice this takes water. I might plan to get a water place later, and if I put this over here, and then I plan to put the water over here, I could wake up my water generator and my goat generator at the same time to be more efficient. But for now, I'm just going to put it here. And because I have now, and but I need the wood the brick and the stone. So to get that, I've got some wood, boop, sleepy. I've got the brick, sleepy, and I've got the stone, sleepy. So I've just knocked out over half of my workforce to get this goat farm. Um, and they're gonna stay asleep until they get woken up. However, um, well not however, so this is an empty place. It's not actually gonna do many work, but however, yeah, there's the however. Since I have a, um, a layabout in town just doing nothing, he immediately fills that spot. That always happens. If there's ever a case where you have somebody out of work and a building comes available, you have no choice. They will immediately occupy it. So I've now got a guy who can generate goats. However, he can't just flip over and generate goats like everybody else because uh, they're making all those base things. He requires water. So to make a goat, I now have to go into um, one of the core elements of the game, which is a chain reaction. I need water before I can make a goat. But whenever I'm going to make a goat, I make water at the same time. So to do this, I have to look around. Um, if I marry into this village, into this house, I can get water. If I marry into this village, I can get water. So let's say later on, well, let's say I don't do anything yet, right? So I built, and now it's um, Jen's turn, and she, I don't know, she, uh, she has a baby. Boom. And, um, you know, so she's got this married couple over here. Now, even though um, my lady, who's kind of sleepy from um, generating the stone, she's not too sleepy to actually get a little action going and have that baby. So Jen chooses to have a baby girl, let's say. Oh, isn't that sweet? Um, which is, you know, upping her workforce. And now it's my turn again. So I've got another worker. And now um, I would like to be able to use this goat farm. So, uh, but again, I don't have water myself. So I'm going to go ahead and get married. 
Um, and wouldn't you know, uh, now I don't have anybody in my village anymore because he went over here, but if I, I've got this teenage girl in school who can get married, she's a girl, and look, this is just beautiful serendipity. I'm going to marry into Jen's um, village and uh, marry this nice man and get the water. Now, that means I have access to water. Unfortunately, I've also helped Jen. I have given her now another couple, which means she can generate more babies. Currently, Jen can generate two babies where I can only generate one. But on the flip side, I can generate water. So that's kind of what I was after. And then let's say it's Jen's turn. And now, okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about how the uh, two-player game works at this point. There's the dummy village. And again, there's the dowries. Uh, there's a lot. The dummy village has all kinds of people ready to go to work and several houses. And it has one action marker. This action marker is available to anybody who wants it. Um, it's just you take your turn and use it. So Jen's, because I haven't grabbed it yet, Jen's going to grab it now and she's going to do an action. She's going to have uh, the dummy village also get married. Um, I've done it now, she, uh, the dummy village. So that she can take one of these um, layabouts who's lying around, uh, dude and marry into her village, and now she can make three babies, because uh, she's got three married couples. Um, so that was Jen's turn. My turn again. Now, um, I've, I've worked hard to get this goat farm up and going, and I'm going to take advantage of it now. I'm going to take a work uh, a action disc and do the uh, merchant action, which means I can ship stuff off to the big city. So let's see how that works. Uh, I am going to, I want to make a goat and ship it off, but first, I will knock that over to generate the water, which means I've got water now. It's kind of virtual water because everything happens all at once. I okay, take that virtual water. There it is. Knock him down. I've now generated a goat. And because I've done one action, I'm shipping one thing off. It's the goat. And as shown earlier, I have actually successfully shipped a goat and gotten one, two points. One, two. Jen's gotten married like crazy, but I'm screaming ahead. Screaming ahead, I tell you, in terms of points. Now, um... For this example, I just laid one um, of my little actions just down, my third one. But there's one thing I haven't mentioned so far. This game is kind of a very interesting action race because you. Um, this has been a very polite game we've been playing so far where we're each just doing one at a time and kind of getting maximum efficiency. But that's not the way the game usually plays with players because you can put down as many discs as you want to do as many actions as you want. So um, I said before I was going to ship off one thing. Uh, say for the, for the purpose of example, I actually put two discs here. That means I'm going to do two shipments. You saw me do one, make the water, to make the goat, to ship the goat, and now I look around, um, this guy's still awake. Everybody else, everybody else for me is asleep. He's awake, so I'm going to knock him over, generate some straw, which means I have also, at the big city, shipped off some straw. Now these three basics, or the six basics, the, you know, all the basic things, you get no bonus um, point for being the first one there, but still I've scored another point. So I'm up to five and I, you know, so I shipped two things, got two stuff off there. Now here's the interesting part. I made a bit of a power play there, shipped off two things. I have no more discs. I've used my last disc for that action. That means this round is over. And my poor wife, who still has three of her actions, she will not get to do those actions. She did one action, she had a baby, and then the second action, she used uh, the yellow, and then for her third action, sorry, you don't get one. She's SOL, and um, so the reality is, as a general rule, when you're playing this game, you're not doing one here, one here, one here. You're doing big moves. Okay, I'm going to build three buildings, or I'm going to, you know, get married twice, or I'm going to, you know, wake up the whole world by, you know, doing several night watchmen. And that's a really key element to the game. So because I've done that, I finish the turn. Uh, she doesn't get to go anymore. She's very sad. But as a consolation prize, that means um, she gets the first player marker. And as you remember, the first player marker, whoever has it, gets one point. So she just scored a point, and I just lost a point. Um, and then starting next round, she will get to go first. And she can kind of set the, uh, the, the, the tempo of the next round. Now, there's one last bit um, that we do at the end of a, of a round. Uh, we look at the board, and you may have noticed there's these additional little tiles. So at the end of the round, these get awarded um, based on who did what. And it's, it's based on who got the majority. So in this case, I got the majority here is the only one. So I get the builder tile. I got the majority here with two. So I get the merchant tile. Um, nobody did the night watchman. So this stays up here. Nobody gets that. Um, 
Let's see, there's a tie here between me and yellow, so nobody gets the priest. So Jen, you could say she kind of blocked me on that by doing by using the dummy player. And then Jen, um, she's the only one here, so she gets the uh, wet nurse, the midwife token. Now, what these tokens mean are, you'll notice, they've got a point on them. So I've gotten these two, which means I've scored one, two more points. And Jen's gotten her midwife, so she's scored one point. Um, but as you can imagine, on a following turn, um, you, know, you might lose these points because somebody else gets those starters. But what these mean is, in addition to the one point that I've got, as long as I hold on to them, they also mean I've got one additional, uh, in this case, I've got two additional actions I can do in the next round for free. And Jen's got one. While things are going on, um, you know, if, if on a given turn, well, actually, you know what, let's move on. Let's actually go through the next turn, just as a further example. So I take my action disc back. Do, do, do. The neutral guy goes back. Jen's one action disc goes back. She's first. But before the next round starts, five, count them. One, two, three, four, five new tiles come out. And there's all kinds of excitement for what these tiles are. Let's look at them. Um, so there's another uh, goods conversion one. Um, that, and these are the second level conversions. You know, the base were lumber and bricks and all that. The second level is actually refined ore, cows, and bread. And if I have this, I can convert those things. So let's just put it over here with uh, the conversions. Uh, here's the first victory point house. Um, if whoever builds this house, which requires wood, brick, and beer, which, interestingly, nobody can make beer yet. Um, these tiles come up randomly. So you can get these situations where somebody really wants to build this, but they can't build it until the beer house comes up. But anyway, when somebody builds this and puts it down here, they get three points. And that's, boom, three points they've got towards winning the game. So that's very, very nice. Um, here's the thing that would let you turn your raw ore into um, iron or whatever it is. So I'll put this over here with the uh, ore iron. And another two victory point houses came up. And this one um, requires two stone, which we know is gettable and the iron and there is a building so you know somebody might say well hey i want to build this so that i can build this and get three points but you know somebody else might build this no problem marry the person that ends up in that and then you've got access to it too so okay, so these five new things have come up um where are they one two three four yeah oh yes i uh Oh, five. Yeah, there's the fifth one. So those five things have come up. Uh, we've taken our actions back. Jen is now the first player. And it starts... Oh, oh, and the last thing. Babies grow up. So the baby Jen had goes off to school. And the, 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 the teenage girl who never got married comes back to the village waiting to get to work. I had no babies. There were no babies over there. Um, so the, the kids are growing up. That's the last step. Now it's Jen's turn. And so she might start out in this situation. Um, let's see. Right off the bat, you know, she's uh, done a little bit of growth and now she wants to get on the building train too. So let's say she wants to build that iron, um, that iron area. So what do you know? She happens to have a stone, puts that guy to sleep, puts this brick guy to sleep. Um, that lets her build this. And she puts it here, let's say, arbitrarily. And then because she's got a couple of ladies lying around doing nothing, um, there's now a headmistress of the iron ingot factory or what have you. Um, and so all of that was one build action. But let's say she actually did two build actions. She wants to build something else as well. She wants, she's built the iron ingot, but she needs the ore. She wants to build this ore too. So she's put two um, actions. So she, and you saw the first one she built. The second one she's going to build is this, which requires wood. However, she has no wood. She has access to wood over here. If she puts this guy to sleep, she has access to wood. So she could put him to sleep and get, have the wood to build this. But she's going to do something else because there's a special thing about the um, builder. Um, you can put additional discs down. You can only do this with a builder. It doesn't work with any other ones. Additional discs that don't let you do additional action but give you resources. So what she's doing is she's putting this disc down as a third one. It doesn't mean she builds a third building. But she can take for this um, building a free wood, brick, or stone. And so she's putting this down to basically get the wood, which she needed for that. And she's built there. And hey, here's this other kit she had. So boom, right off the bat now, she has in one action, or one move, spent three actions, gotten two buildings, and has set herself up to start making um, uh, you know, a second level 
a resource. So she's actually doing pretty good there. I mean, I took the early jump, but she set herself up to take a bigger jump. And so that was a big move, three actions. She take, uses her next one, the round's over. So now the pressure's on me. I know I don't have much time, so I can't piecemeal. I gotta make one big move, because she's um, gonna end me pretty quick. And I think I'll stop there, because that kind of gives you an idea. Um, you know, I, my, my big move might, well, I'll tell you what my big move is probably gonna be. It's gonna be to wake all these people up, because I'm not gonna be able to generate anything. So, um, uh, yeah, this is one good final example. I will put two workers on the night watchman. Which, by the way, means I have majority, so hopefully at the end of the turn, if nobody beats me here, I'll get that marker as well. So I've got the well, night watchman, I'll wake up this group, which doesn't benefit her. So that was actually a bad move on her part. She should have had this guy go to sleep to get that wood, because then when I'm, I would have woken her guy up as well. And for my second, because I've done two, I could wake this guy up all by himself, goat man. But instead, I'm going to wake this area up over here and wake up two of my people and inadvertently wake up Jen's people as well. Maybe a good move, maybe not. But um, before my turn is over, remember I've got these extra actions, I'm going to take a bonus action by using one of these. And my bonus action is going to be, oh, what the heck, I'm going to do my bonus action is the merchant. So I flip it over to indicate I've done a merchant. And because I just woke up, um, you know, my, uh, my water pail, I'm going to go down again. Uh, so I'm generating some water specifically to ship water off to the big city. Why did I do that? Well, right off the bat, I get one more point, obviously. But let's talk a bit about these bonus uh, tiles over here. You will notice, oh, bah, well, um, that the first person who builds all three, or I say ships all three of these, gets this. It's one extra point at the end of the game. The first person who builds these three things gets two extra points. The first person, or I keep saying build, but the first person who ships all of these things on the left side gets four points. First person who ships all those gets four points. Um, now, actually, this is kind of a dumb random thing. If these had been up here and I ha only had to build one more brick, I'd be set. I'd get the bonus points, but I don't know what I'm building for here. But again, this is all random. Uh, the last bonus points you notice are there's the first person who does a complete ring around their city gets four points. And the second person who does it gets two points. And by ring around city, that means, um, you know, another building and a building and a building. Get out of the way. Out of the way. Building building. This, this obviously is going to take a while, um, but eventually, yay, I've got an entire super village going on. However, I do not earn this, um, this uh, bonus four points yet because these buildings are all empty. I've got to have babies, send them off to school, let them join the workforce, um, and you'll get into these buildings, which is going to take a while. It's going to take quite a while, in fact, but eventually, now I've got a worker in all these buildings except for the victory points and the victory points. Victory point buildings do not require workers ever. So because I've gotten all these buildings, even those guys asleep, um, at the instant that happens, I get this four bonus point chip. Um, so actually, you know, this is much later in the game. I've got the four bonus points. I got three points here and I got three points here. So I'm doing very, very well. Uh, but it took a while. And of course, over the course of the game, as I was um, getting more of these workers in, um, Jen would have been marrying in, um, which would let me drink more workers. If Jen's not doing it, I can use the dummy player to marry in and, um, and get more, get more babies that way. Oh, this is a town of all men. There's no ladies. Um, yeah, m m marry a lady in. And that's kind of how the game works. Every turn, um, you're in a race to use your actions as fast as you can before you get um, pushed out um, to do these five actions, build, ship, wake people up, get married, have babies, um, get points by shipping off to the big city, keep on working your way up, and as soon as somebody crosses the magic 20 line, game's over. Uh, now, of course, or actually, I think the game plays out to the end of that round. Everybody else gets their, their final go, go round, um, which still gives other people a chance to cross the finish line and maybe jump even further ahead, which is not an unusual occurrence. So, um, turn it back around to myself. Look out in three, two, one. So, that's Helvetia. Um, my wife and I love it a lot. We play two player games almost exclusively. We're in a gaming group, so we play a little bit with uh, more players, but we play this quite a bit. A lot of people don't like, um, you know, dummy players, but we think it adds a really great um, additional tactical element to the game, um, which just gives you more control and gives you more to think about, which is what we love. And, you know, the thing that's really just very unique about this game um, are the themes of 
of, of player interaction that isn't all about beating the other player into a pulp. I mean, everybody's always going on about, oh, there's not enough interaction, it's multiplayer solitaire. This is not a solitaire game. Everything your opponent does affects you. But you're working, um, you're almost kind of tacitly working together. It's a very positive thing. If I help myself in her village, I'm helping her too. And that's probably the thing we love more than anything else about this game. And um, I hope you enjoyed this. Again, I apologize very much for the uh, shaky cam and also for any rules I might have gotten wrong. Uh, I'm sure people will correct me if anyone's even remotely interested in re watching this. And now I'm going to hit the stop button if I know where it is and uh, figure out how to upload this to YouTube. Uh, thanks everybody. Um, talk to you soon.